guys, how's it going? So today's video is one that I've kind of been toying with the idea of doing and it is called the 10 products I regret buying and it really didn't mean to have 10 products, I was just pulling things out of my collection that I really don't know why I even bought. Um, and as you can see, I got a haircut. I cut my hair two days ago. Um, I'm still getting used to it. It's kind of shorter than I normally get. Um, I don't like it when it's like straight. Um, the only time I really like how it looks is when I've curled it. So I've been curling it every day, which I know is really bad for my hair, but you know, whatever. But I'm slowly, slowly getting used to it. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out ways I like it because when it's straight, I just think it's awful and I miss my long hair. Um, the only time I really miss my long hair is when I'm running and I want to put it up in a pony because I can't put this up in a pony. Um, but I do like that. I really don't have to worry about it getting tangled. I like that I don't have to blow dry it because it dries within like 15 minutes by air. So I guess it's, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still getting used to it. But I'm going to get into this video. So like I said, I went through my makeup collection and I pulled out products that I didn't like, that didn't work for me, I never used. You know, things that I just regret purchasing. Um, so I'm going to show them to you. Um, I have a wide range of things, so I'm just going to get started. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is a blush product, and it is the Maybelline Dream Bouncy Blush. I know some people really like these blushes. I know some people really hate them. And I don't know if it's just this blush. Um, this is a really um, light pink color. I probably should have you know, picked up a darker color, maybe that would have worked a little better. But the concept is really cool. You just press it and it presses down, but you really don't get a lot of color. Um, I was finding that I would be patting my finger into this for a very long time and I still couldn't get any color. I mean, you really can't see anything. And I thought if I found a different way to apply this, I would like it. I tried my stippling brush, I tried my fingers, um, I tried my beauty blender. I just couldn't get this product to work for me. So unfortunately, I really, really regret purchasing this product. The next product I'm going to talk about is this Mary Kay Loose Powder. And I picked this up at the thrift store. I saw it for like five bucks and I thought, wow, you know, I never get to try Mary Kay because I don't know anybody who sells it. Um, but this is a little bit too dark. Um, I thought maybe once I get a tan this summer, I'd be able to use it. But I think it's going to be much too dark. And it's very, very messy. I actually did use this on my friend one day because I was doing her makeup and she has much darker skin than I did. And it looked really good on her, but for me it was just kind of a miss. Maybe this summer I'll like it. Who knows? I'm not really much of a loose powder girl. My my skin is much too dry for powder. Um, I, re I rarely set my foundation and concealer with a pressed powder just because my it'll like set weird in my dry patches on my face and it just it looks awful. Um, the next thing is another thing that a lot of people really, really love in the beauty community on YouTube and all over the web, and it is the EOS Lip Balms. I have a hair stuck in my lip gloss. Um, I really, really liked this the first time I used it. Um, it smells really, really good, and it was really moisturizing at first, but then I noticed, I don't know if I'm allergic to it or something, but it was making my lips very chapped and blistered and like even like the skin below my lips and this little part below my nose it was really like irritated and raw and sore and I stopped using this and my lips and my lips and mouth just got immediately better so I don't know what it is about this that did that but I'm just so disappointed because I really loved it at first and actually I had another one of these before this one and it, that never happened, so I'm wondering if it was just this, if I got an expired one, or what it was. But all I know is once I put this on my lips, I'm just so irritated. So, who knows, who knows. Another, another lip product that I really was disappointed in is a lipstick by Revlon, and this is from their Super Lustrous collection. And this is Silver City Pink. And it actually is a very gorgeous, nudie pink shimmery color. And I thought it was really pretty when I like swatched it, but when I put it, apply it, I just, it doesn't show up at all, which is really unfortunate. You can't really even see it in a swatch. It's just a really pretty champagne color. Um, I tried wearing this under lip glosses, kind of, and it just, I can't find, it seemed to find a match that works for me. Moving on to eyes, I have one eyeshadow palette that I just was so disappointed in, and it's unfortunate because I remember when it came out, I think it came out last summer or a summer or two ago, 
but everybody was just going on and on how about how amazing this product was and unfortunately bug and unfortunately for me it just didn't work and it is the Maybelline quad in sunlit bronze and the colors the colors look really pretty in the packaging and they're just really pretty very shimmery colors but when I applied them it just left a huge glitter ball mess on my eyes you couldn't see like any color it was just nothing but glitter so this is the this is the lid color well the highlight I guess you would say this is the lid this is for the crease and this is for the liner and that is just so sheer and I just I don't care for this palette the only thing I've been able to use this palette for is I take this color right here and I apply it to my cheekbones as a highlight that is the only way I've been able to get any use out of this palette so I know lots of people it works for them but I just I can't get it to work maybe it works a lot better on the darker skin tones um, I don't know I hope some people can find a way to make that work staying along with the eyes I have an eyeliner from Rimmel London that I never used I bought it thinking oh this would be really cool um, and it was it's purple um, I'm not really a person who goes for color um, in my eye looks I'm always just very natural and neutral but I got this thinking I could do something with it um, there's a swatch of it and I actually wore it like once and I decided that it made me look very sick and tired and looking like a vampire so I just said I'm never wearing this again so unfortunately this just was a very very big miss but thankfully it was only like three bucks so I'm really not out that much money Okay, I have two nail polishes that I really regret buying, and the first one is a Sally Hansen Complete Manicure, and this is in Shall We Dance, and it looks like a very pretty creamy pink milky color, but when I apply it, it's so sheer, even with five coats, I can still, like, see no color to it. Now, I do use this if I just want a very natural look, like, I use a lot on my toes when I don't want to paint any color on my toes. Or I just want a natural look because I'm going to a job interview or something. But I just, I don't reach for this very often. I'm very disappointed in it. Which sucks because these are expensive nail polishes. They're like $7 and that's for a drugstore nail polish. Like, I don't want to pay that if it's not going to work for me. Okay, the next polish is from the Nicole by OPI. And this is the next CEO. And again, this is another polish that, this was another product that I heard rave reviews about. And when I found it at Walmart. I was very excited to get it and I got it home and it didn't look very good on my skin. Um, it took a couple coats to reach the op opacity, opaqueness that I wanted. Um, I do however like to wear this under my black shatter polish um, occasionally just because that's the Hawkeye colors, black and gold, and I'll wear that like on the big game days for the Iowa Hawkeyes, but I rarely reach for this and I actually it looks like I'm missing a lot, but that's because I actually I accidentally dropped it and it spilled everywhere. The only thing I really, really like about this polish is the very thick, wide paddle brush. I just like the way that it applies. It doesn't take that many sweeps to get the polish over and it leaves very, very little streaks. So I really like the paddle. I don't like the polish. Okay, I have two random things left. The first one is just a brush cleanser I picked up from Sephora. It was in their like little to-go thing. I thought, you know, I could use a brush cleaner to like wash my brushes in between deep cleansing. But I really didn't like the way this made my brushes smell. I didn't like the way they made them look. It made them clumpy even after they were dry like the um, bristles would stick together. Hair in my mouth. Ugh. Yuck. But yeah, I didn't care for this and I never ever use it. The only time I use it is if I'm cleaning off the gel liner from my angled brush um, before I deep clean it. No, I threw it. Okay. Okay, so the last product is kind of a hyped up straightener and it is kind of a hyped up um, heat protectant and it is a Chi Iron Guard. And for a while, I really, really loved this. I would use it every time I'd straighten my hair. It would just give my hair a very sleek look. But I noticed that when I would use it and when I would straighten my hair, my roots would get very oily and greasy. And it would go, like, all the way down my hair. And it just felt gross and nasty. And I'm like, well, what could it be? Because I, I know I have very 
fine hair that's very prone to oiliness and greasiness, but I wouldn't apply this anywhere near my roots. I would apply it down to the very ends and when I had long hair so I'd only apply it to like there so I don't know how my hair was getting so greasy then I switched to using my Tresemme heat tamer spray and I never experienced the oiliness or greasiness I experienced when I straightened my hair with this so I must I assume that this was what was causing my hair to get so greasy so this was an expensive hair product I think I paid $13 for it and I really didn't care for the way it made my hair look but then I started using this and it was only three dollars and it saved it just made me so much happier so another big disappointment and I'm left with I still have quite a bit of this I think I have over half left so I don't know what I'm gonna do with this those are the pot products I regret buying I hope this helped you a little bit I always like to watch these videos so I know what works for people and what doesn't but uh, like I said you know stuff that doesn't work for me might work for you it's all you know it really depends on your skin type, your preferences, and all that other stuff. But leave a comment below telling me a product you really didn't care for. And I will see you all in my next video.